So where we left off, I was piecing together my layers, uh, softening and transitioning their edges. I have several more to go. See, as I build my post-apocalyptic swamp at dusk. Now, I want to keep myself aware of what the intentions of my sketch were. So I have my little screen grab of my sketchbook here with all of those different issues. I don't, I don't want any active vehicles or figures or fire or, any, or, or uh, waterfalls, anything that's clearly not moving that we would expect to be moving. And I also have my references here, uh, different things I might want to use, many of which I've brought in, but maybe not all. Okay, so as I get started in continuing this, um, I want to point out that I have more space than I need. And at this point, I might use my move tool. And because I have my rulers turned on, and if your rulers aren't turned on, just hit Command R, and it will show you the inches that your assignment is taking up. So right now it's 30 by 40 inches of space, but I only really want to print about 11 by 14. So right now I'm going to kind of drag these guides by clicking on the ruler. moving it down and what these guides help me see is what the rough composition I want is. So I'm not a slave to any one reference in terms of what my final for format is or what's called aspect ratio. And for a concept portfolio it's actually better unless you're designing a portfolio only for feature film or only for TV um, for a generalized kind of concept portfolio, you want it to fit a more standard size. So this will print really well for a portfolio because it's close to a nine by 12 kind of orientation, like a regular sheet of letter paper, as opposed to it being like extremely anamorphic widescreen, which might be what all, all of the Blade Runner background paintings are done, <laughs> how they're done, but it kind of limits your portfolio otherwise by limiting composition. All right. So that's where we are. I'm going layer by layer and starting to blend. And the first trick before I even start erasing more, the first trick just to remind you is to use a soft eraser to get rid of hard edges, right? Unless the thing that you're putting in is man-made and has hard edges. So I've softened all those edges. Now, before I do any more erasing, I want to play with levels and I want to play with color balance, these direct adjustments. So this is the layer I'm working with. I go to image adjustments levels and I want to make sure that the, the brightness and contrast matches. So you can see I don't want it brighter, it's at dusk, so I want to push the midtones a little bit darker. I can play with limiting the highlights, and that's, that's going to help quite a bit, making it seem like dusk. Right? Especially since there's kind of a sun over here in this reference. And because this is Earth, my, my color reference is over there. And that's my lighting. So this is going to be more silhouetted, more backlit. I can play with deepening the shadows, but that feels like too dark too soon. I can even limit the shadows a little bit, but I don't think that's helpful. So that's the levels. See the difference that makes. And then I'm going to change the color. So I go to adjustments and color balance, which is not very extreme, but perfect for this. This has a lot more warms, a lot more red and magenta and yellow in it. So I'm gonna push the color balance a little bit more towards cyan in the midtones. See how that starts to blend it. I'm gonna push it a little against the yellows towards the blues and a little bit against the magentas towards the green, but not very much. And then in the shadows, I'm going to push it even more towards the blues as we get starting to match this a little bit more. And then maybe put a little bit more red back in there, in the shadows. Okay, so what kind of difference did that make? It helps me blend the sky much, much better now. Now I'm going to use the magic wand and 
uncheck contiguous. So it's going to be all the blues in this image. And if I want to add to that, because I'm only at a tolerance of 32, I can hold down shift and keep adding them. Basically, I want to cut out this tree. But the problem is, I don't want to cut out everything, because I have the nice reflection of the sky here. So instead of cutting it out first, I'm going to select it all. And then I'm going to play with levels again and color balance again. But now it's just for those sky components because I know I need to darken that sky. So I'm going to push my levels and the midtones down. Notice it's darker now, but it's still really colorful. And I can't fix that here. I'll fix that with my next tool. And I'm going to limit the highlights just a little bit. And that's looking more dusk-like. Then, while I still have that kind of aura around it selected, I'm going to go to Image and not Color Balance this time. Well, I could. I always like Color Balance. I could push it more towards red, a little bit more towards blue, a little bit away from magenta. But I'm not going to get it too close because the, the problem isn't the temperature of the color. The problem is more that it's too uh, intense a color. It's too saturated, too colorful. So then I need to go to image adjustment and what's called hue saturation. So this is the third direct adjustment that's useful. And with this, I can just simply take the saturation level, the intensity level. I can push it up, make that blue even more intense, but that's the opposite of what I want. Or I could take it down, make it less intense. And this way, as I play with the levels. I can go back to levels and deepen the midtones even more. Right. Limit the highlights even more. And you see how now those are really starting to feel like they're part of the same environment. And especially in the reflections, which is what I was most concerned about. And now as I erase, and I'm going to use a soft eraser, at around, because I've already softened the edges, at about an 80% opacity, pretty large. I'm going to leave that selection so I'm not accidentally erasing parts of my tree. Instead, I'm just erasing from this different source material I've already created. And you see, because it matches already so much, I don't need to worry so much about getting everything exact. If I hit Command-D to deselect, you'll see where there's a lot that still needs to be erased in there. So I go back, and I just hit it lightly, and you'll see the difference. And then, of course, there's going to be little noise that happens because Things weren't exactly in the selection area. And this was a little bit brighter than anything I selected. Without having to be super careful, I can hit that with my eraser. And kind of soften that up. Again, nice with post-apocalyptic scenes. This tree can does not need to retain all its leaves and all its branches. <coughs> At any time, I can just cut away from it. And then selectively soften. And it's tricky with such a big eraser brush, but it can be effective. Then at any time as well, I can use my magic wand and I can select, you know, just those kind of pinkish whites and then go in with my eraser and knock them back without worrying about all the stuff around them. But I like the kind of glow on the horizon. I want to keep some of that. So I'm just taking it down with a little bit of opacity. Oh. 
and then all these bright blues in there that I didn't quite get. Let me hit those with the magic wand. Then let me erase those out with a fuller opacity eraser. So the magic wand is not just for hitting delete after. It can make a mask, a stencil, that helps you erase. And if you ever need like just extreme detail, you can zoom in. You can see all those little fragments. Right? And that's why compositing can be really tedious at times. But I'm going to show you another trick now that will help with that, because this is not something I need in perfectly sharp focus. In fact, most of my background layers, it's better if the focus is, is dimmed a little bit. So here's the next trick. Let's see. Yeah, that landscape's working pretty well. The next trick is to use a filter for the first time. And it's the only filter we're ever going to use, unless we're just messing around. And a filter is kind of like an Instagram filter. It's something that the people who made Adobe Photoshop thought would look cool, they programmed it in. But the problem is you as the artist don't have full control over what it does. But there are a few exceptions to that in filters. And so the one that's been around the longest, I'm going to make a duplicate just so I can show you the difference, is called Gaussian Blur. Named after a famous graphic artist who Gaussian dots are also named after, Gaussian roses, and we'll learn more about those with printing. Pre-Photoshop. So right now, all these pixels are really sharp. That's the problem with raster imaging. very very sharp and when printed they'll look a little digitized but if I go to filter on this layer this copy I made and I say filter blur then not just their presettings but then I go to Gaussian blur this gives me control of how much it softens the edge and I wanted to soften it with the preview just a, a little bit now if I zoom in can see the preview. See how that kind of sets it back in space? It gets rid of a lot of that. So that's 1.3 pixels. It gets rid of all those super pixelated, noisy image remnants. Okay, so I'm going to do 1.6, hit OK, and then I can go in and just gently erase at maybe a slightly lower opacity some of these aspects. And then I might also want to do that to this background layer. So I'm going to make a duplicate of that just in case I change my mind. Turn off the one behind it. Mark it as red. These are my blurred layers. Filter, Gaussian Blur, and it will remember my last setting. So just a little softened. And you see how that kind of bleeds then into the background a little bit more. But it also softens the foreground elements in those same layers. But that's OK, because I'm using them for middle ground. The one last thing I might do on this one is take the sky, do a big eraser, very soft edge, low opacity, and just hit it one more time to transition the foreground sky with the background sky. And then I can do it here as well. Yeah, but this is looking looking promising. All right. Next. It's always good to save once you finish compositing some layers. So big difference, right? Softening edges, putting everything together. So what's the first thing we do? We go to a 100% soft-edged eraser and we get rid of those hard edges. 